Welcome back. Beautiful, isn't it? Eugenia Zuckerman is an internationally known flutist. She has played with some of the greatest orchestras in the world as a flute virtuoso. She's also a journalist. She used to cover the arts for CBS News. And recently, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. Here's my interview with Eugenia Zuckerman. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this. It really is a pleasure to talk to you. It's an honor for me, thank you. Oh, well, thank you, and the honor is all mine. Let me go back to when you thought, not when you were diagnosed, but when you thought you were having a problem. I never thought I was having a problem. Oh. It was my daughters who said to me, mom, something is really wrong. You are out of it. You're, you're not yourself, etc." I went with my younger daughter to the hospital and um, indeed we talked to a very lovely person who said, yes, it seems that you can take, uh, you, you really must have this thing um, Test. tested. And so I agreed to it. And the first thing that happened after we talked, uh, she said, and now we're going to ask you to go downstairs and uh, you're going to have a Cat's CAT scan. And I thought, oh, fun, I'll go downstairs and I'll do the CAT scan. And I must be one of the very few people who really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Because for some reason, once they slid me into that very special place, the noise and the sound, maybe because I'm a musician, but I, I just was in heaven. I thought that noise, etc., was magical. Well, I want to point out, and I learned this when I saw the CBS Sunday morning piece, that your husband sometimes fills in the blanks when you don't come up with a word. And we just heard him a couple of times during this interview already. Can can he just move over so we can see him for one second? Just yeah, just he's a hi. handsome dude. Hi there. Hi, how are you? What a wonderful, loving relationship you have. <laughs> Thank you. So I'm the supplier of the word sometimes. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. And it's <laughs> thank you. Thank you for being there. And uh, I thank him. After you got that diagnosis, what was your reaction? My reaction was that I got on the subway and went home. Um, and I went up to my apartment, uh, sat at my desk, stared at the wall for a very long time. And then suddenly, I have no idea why, I picked up a pen and and a piece of paper and I started writing. I thought maybe I could um, read my a short poem about my diagnosis. I do want to t give the title of the book. It, it's Falling Through the Clouds. Like, like falling. Like through falling through the clouds. Thank you for correcting me. What does that mean? Uh, it means that I think, I, I, gosh, I've never been asked this, but I think it means that I was somewhere else and I went through that process of sort of falling through a cloud and realizing things were happening. Yeah. Maybe that was it, I don't know. But uh, uh, the poem I'm going to read is called Forgetting. I told you, you asked me that already. Don't you remember? What is wrong with you? How many times do I have to tell you? Why don't you listen? Are you okay? Don't you recall? Are you losing it? I think you're losing it. You need a doctor or something. You need some help. That's actually uh, some great advice to any family that may be struggling with this right now. I think maybe the greatest um, honor I felt was uh, at a book signing at the end of it, a very well-dressed man came up to get my signature. And he said that he um, himself is, has Alzheimer's and his family has not been able to process it or talk about it. And he said that the, my book made it very clear to his family and to himself what was going on with me and they stopped being either afraid or angry at him. Have you thought about how the disease is going to progress or do you keep take that out of your mind? I take it out of my mind. Um, I, I every once in a while think about it and think what what is that word I need etc but it doesn't 
trouble me so much. I don't know why. I, um, I do think about the future. Mainly, I don't want my family to suffer. I don't want them to feel burdened. That's, that's a big thing for me. The, the truth is that Alzheimer's is a death sentence. That's what it is. But everybody has a death sentence. And I could step off the curb in New York City and boom, that would be it. Same thing can happen here. But the most important thing for me is to stay positive. And that's easy for me because I am right now in a room with a crazy cat who is actually sleeping upside <laughs> down. Uh, there are two dogs. There are um, horses out back. I mean, we're very, very lucky. You talked about a book signing where somebody came up to you. Do you have any more coming up or is that impossible now with COVID-19? All virtual. Uh, well, it's all virtual. Um, and I have talked to large groups of people like um, at Harvard when they could ask me questions and it was, um, I, I felt very good about it. When they ask questions like, how do you stay so positive? I, I try to let them know that, uh, that the, uh, it's, it's unacceptable not to be positive um, because I have, I have a limited amount of time. I know that we all have a limited amount of time. The book, one more time. Like falling through a cloud. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks again. Musician, journalist, and poet, Eugenia Zuckerman. Again, her book is titled, Like Falling Through a Cloud. When Jersey Matters comes right back, you'll meet an 11-year-old girl who has started a movement to thank first responders. That's when Jersey Matters continues.